It is 1793, and you are a commoner in Paris, France, during the height of the French Revolution, specifically the Reign of Terror. You hear a commotion outside, and upon further inspection, you witness another person being subjected to the wrath of the guillotine, right in the middle of the town square. With a clean swipe, there goes the life of another one, the executioner showing off the head of the beheaded man to the viewers of the public spectacle. Awestruck, you wonder how long this will continue. Fast forward almost 200 years to the late 20th century in the United States. Two ex-convicts have been accused of murdering a family and have been sentenced to death. You don't hear much about these criminals for some time until they are eventually executed by hanging several years later. Public support for the death penalty is at an all-time low during this era, with most people, including you, not supporting the punishment received by these murderers. There is no doubt of the shift in public perception towards the death penalty. In this unit, we will be comparing capital punishment in revolutionary era France to late 20th century United States. This will accomplish a comparison and contrasting of capital punishment in two ways, one being a comparison in country and culture, and other being a comparison in era. By doing so, this lecture will link itself to concepts from both Unit 1 and Unit 2. To start off, we will be discussing capital punishment during the French Revolution. This point in French history was a time of unprecedented change and reform. The events occurring during this era are arguably some of the most profound in the history of our world. There were many factors involved, mainly stemming from the suffering of the lower class. France had large amounts of debt, partially coming from France supporting the colonies in America with their fight against the British Empire. The poor inhabitants of France faced the brunt of tax increases due to these debts. Coupling this with some bad harvests, increasing unemployment and prices of common goods, a recipe for revolutionary change lay in the hands of the people. The guillotine, and to a larger extent, the death penalty, became an important symbol of the French Revolution. The range of people executed by the guillotine was vast, from the small shop owner across town who was allegedly accused of being a counter-revolutionary, to the more well-known figures in history, such as King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. The Committee of Public Safety was one of the main factors responsible for the mass executions during the Reign of Terror. In fact, the leader of the committee, Maximilian Robespierre, was also guillotined. This one-of-a-kind punishment for all brought upon a unique transformation to the social structures that still remain from medieval France, most notably feudalism. Further implications of the death penalty will be covered in the associated handout, involving ties to Hannah Kent's novel, Burial Rites. This involves the story of Agnes Magnus Doter, who was the last person to die from the death penalty in Iceland. Finally, a connection can be made between the executions that took place during the French Revolution and the views of Michel Foucault, the author of Discipline and Punish. The observations he made can be extrapolated to the situation at hand here, comparing two different time periods, the pre-transition era during the French Revolution and the post-transition era during 20th century America. This relationship with Unit 1 will be further explored in the handout as well. We will now be moving on to the second part of our introductory lecture discussing capital punishment in the United States by examining the novel In Cold Blood, written by Truman Capote. Imagine driving smoothly down a quiet desert road with a friend, someone you've known for a bit, and someone you've known to have some darker tendencies. All of a sudden, a wild dog comes out into the road, and while normally you might swerve to avoid it, your friend swerves to hit it. Such was a story from Perry Smith, the friend being Richard Hickok and the two being the infamous murderers of the Clutter family. In Cold Blood is considered a nonfiction novel, detailing real events but in a more story-structured fashion. It follows the murders of the Clutter family in Kansas, Richard Hickok and Perry Smith, who were eventually tried and put to death for their crime. The book is known for being against capital punishment, which was a rising opinion during this era and 
country, one of which Capote agreed with, using this novel as a vehicle to deliver his opinion. In particular, this bias is evident within the novel through his portrayal of Perry, whom he had a soft spot for. Capote makes a stark contrast between the two murderers, and it draws a few natural questions. Capote makes his audience ponder who deserves the death penalty, and if some people deserve it more or less than others. This is a theme also seen in burial rites, with Agnes, Siga, and Friedrich. In short, Capote shows that Hickok's evil was his own choosing, while Smith's was due to his up rough upbringing. Through this contrast, Capote implies that Perry might not deserve the death penalty, while Richard may, while also maintaining that the death penalty should not exist. This is something I will elaborate on in the handouts. Ultimately, through these two examples, we will be able to see connections to both Unit 1 and Unit 2. It will be clear to see the connection to the transition and punishment that Foucault discusses, while also connecting to the Kent themes about capital punishment and who does or does not deserve it.